Jamil Jaffer joins us now live. He is the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. He also served as counsel in both the House and Senate, and he is former associate White House counsel to President George W. Bush. Jamil, great to see you. Happy New Year. Are you with us? I'm here. Can you oh, hear me? Okay, great. We have you. Excellent. All right, Jamil. Let's go ahead and start with the voting that took place last week in the House for Speaker. I was just saying 15 ballots, four days. What are your thoughts about what we witnessed? I mean, what does it say right now about the House? What does it say about the Republican Party? Well, obviously, a very fractious and divided Republican Party in the House. Uh, the challenge is trying to get the Speaker elected, as you point out, 15 ballots, unprecedented. Uh, since the 1800s. Um, and the concessions that Speaker McCarthy had to make to get to the fi that final ballot and ultimately get the votes he needed were significant, including things that go at the heart of Republican policies, defense spending, the like. Um, and so we'll see, but I think it's gonna be a very fractious House going forward. We've already seen the challenges on the rules package. We're gonna have a, a fight potentially over the debt limit, right? Or the country defaulting on its debt, which could be tr hugely traumatic for our economy, right? And then of course the budgets and, and whether, uh, you know, Remember, there's a Democratic Senate and a Democratic president. There has to be some sort of room. But right now, Speaker McCarthy is boxed in by his 20 rebellious Republicans. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Let's talk about some of the concessions that McCarthy had to make in order to get this done. Yesterday, the House passed that rule set, right? It passed the legislation around the rules, which make it easier to remove the speaker, also easier to establish investigative committees, but then harder to investigate ethics violations. What does that all signal to you? You know, I mean, it's obviously a challenge. I, mean, I think the most important one of those is this question about bringing the speaker uh, potentially up again for, for a re-vote. I think we're likely to see this triggered more often than probably we've ever seen. And, and it, you know, it's the thing that brought John Boehner down, the threat of this kind of a vote. Um, and it could be the thing that brings Speaker McCarthy down. And then the question is, if, if they bring this kind of motion to the floor, who's next? Is it Scalise? Is it somebody else? Is there a consensus candidate? Because for 15 ballots, as we just saw over the last three, four days, that didn't emerge. And so this is going to be a very real threat. And the 20 rebellious Republicans know this, and they're going to wield it like a cudgel to get the policies they want. And and now you have sort of almost what might, some might call a heckler's veto in the House that will prevent the House from doing almost any business. But of course, there are things that have to get done, like the debt limit, like the budget, and the like that could be catastrophic, not just for our, for our national security, but our economic policy as well, if they don't get done. Yeah, these are all great points. Let's go ahead and circle back for a moment to that rule specifically, because it begs the question, who is in place? You know, how quickly could this happen? And if so, who comes next? Who is in place? What are your thoughts around that? You know, I mean, obviously, you've got the you've got the Republican leadership. You've got you've got Speaker McCarthy. You've got the whip, uh, you know, uh, or the majority leader Scalise. Right. You've got the whip. You've got the conference chairman, uh, chairwoman. And so you've got a few people that are potentially in line. None of them were able to garner, you know, any sort of consensus to be to replace McCarthy on the 15 ballots for speaker. Right. You have even people like Matt Gates voting for a non member of the House, former President Trump. I mean, you know, all sorts of shenanigans going on. And what you thought might emerge was maybe Republicans, some moderate Republicans might make common cause with Democrats. You didn't see that happen either. And so it's not like you saw like a moderate Democrat like an Alyssa Slotkin or a moderate Republican coming up. That didn't happen either. So, boy, you know, Veronica, it's anybody's guess how this plays out. But what you can be assured of almost certainly is chaos and perhaps uh, not a lot of movement in the House. There are those who think that's a good idea. That's And that may very well be true. But, of course, there are things that have to get done like the budget, like the debt limit, like surveillance, uh, you know, authorities. If those don't happen, we could be in a very bad position as a nation, put aside Republican and Democrat. Absolutely. But to your point with Democrats in control of the Senate and then President Biden in the White House, I think the question really is what accomplishments will the House make over the next two years? What do you think Americans should expect here? Well, you know, I think that there's a, a band of folks in the House who don't want the House to have any accomplishments or limited those accomplishments as much as possible. I think they want to see budgets cut and more fiscal discipline. That's actually a good thing probably for our economy. So that kind of that kind of effort, I think, is actually going to benefit us. We'll have more, more nuanced and more focused budgets at the same time. There are very real threats on the horizon. China is getting stronger and stronger. Russia is engaged in an active war in Ukraine. The North Koreans are likely to continue to test nuclear capable missiles and potentially another nuclear weapon. And the Iranians are on the path to getting a nuclear weapon. We need the House to do some substantive work 
particularly particularly getting our surveillance laws reauthorized. So, you know, giving 20 folks the heckler's veto is going to be a real problem and a potential real threat. And I worry about that. So hopefully we can at least see those as some accomplishments, getting the debt limit done in whatever form it needs to be and getting surveillance uh, reauthorized, I think will be very important for this house. And quickly, Jamil, because I've got to let you go. Does McCarthy survive, yes or no? You know, I didn't think he was gonna make it this far, so it's anybody's guess, I think it's gonna be a real challenge for him. All right, Jamil Jaffer is the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Jamil, it is great to see you. Thanks so much for being with us.